Welcome back to MVM. Today we have a Kickstarter preview. This one is for Ragusa. It is a one to five player game that takes place in the 15th century. You're in the Mediterranean, you're in Venice, and you're using a port to build this walled city. Yeah, so you're actually competing. Um, you did say one to five players uh, mm -hmm. with the solo mode, but you're competing with other players to kind of um, add your buildings to this city. You're, you're kind of cooperatively building a city, but yet it is a victory point game. So you want to come out with the most victory points by the end. So each player is going to have an X number of houses in the game. The number is dependent upon the number of players you have. We have a four player game set up, so each of us has 10 of these houses. It's also the end game condition. Once all the players have placed all 10 of their houses onto the board, that signifies the end of the game. So it's a very quick game as well. Yeah. When you look at the board itself, it's broken into two main areas. This is where you're going to be placing your buildings. It's where you're going to be placing building walls and also building any of the, the structures, the, mm -hmm. the, towers. the towers that mm -hmm. you see in the game. You have the rural area. This is where all the main resources in the game are going to be collected. And then you have the city itself. The city is going to be comprised of 10 different spaces. Yeah. Each of these different spaces is going to allow you to do some kind of unique ability within the game. The rural areas are basically going to give you the different resources. Now, yeah. one of the unique things about this game is that resources in this game aren't spent. Like once you gain the resources, they're going to be noted on these cards that you have on the outside of your player board. The commodities that they can be mm -hmm. turned into, however, can be spent. Yeah, and that's what I think is really cool. Um, uh, it makes putting these buildings out very important yeah. because they're they're kind of like um, an, an abstracted, once you have the building down, you're going to have that resource forever. Right. Um, and there are six different resources that you have to balance. Three of those resources can be turned into commodities that can further score victory points. So you are definitely doing a balancing act throughout this entire game. Those three resources are your grapes, your olives, and your silver because those can be turned into the commodities themselves. When you look at the player board, you're going to notice a row through the center of the board. These are the three different commodities that you can have and it's silver bars, you have olive oil, and then you have wine basically. Mm -hmm. On the outside, you have your three resources across the top and three other resources across the bottom. These are tracked with cards and these are going to be rotated depending upon however many of those resources you have at that time. And as I said, these resources are never spent. You just keep tracking those up the more resources that you gain. How you gain resources is by placing your buildings in these hex-based areas on the actual game board itself. Now, it's kind of hard to see here, but each of these individual areas is a hex in and of itself. So when you place on any of these locations within the game board, you're actually touching three other hexes. So if I place here, I'm touching this, this, and this hex, meaning I have a two wood and one mm -hmm. um, stone at that given time. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of important to, to think about these hexes because you can only build one building on every hex unless you gather more wood. Mm -hmm. And the same applies for the city. You can only build one building on each hex unless you gather more stone. So you're encouraged. You want to get a lot of that wood. You want to get a lot, a lot of that stone. However, you still want to get the other resources because you want to turn them into commodities. Before we start talking about how to play the game, we're also going to note a couple other components. Across the top, you're going to have the commodities tracker. This is going to indicate the value of each of these commodities throughout the game. On your player board, you're tracking how many you have, but here you're tracking what the prices of those commodities are. Across the bottom, you have the port, and these are the shipping cards. There's going to be five shipping cards that are face up. These are all going to tell you what you can ship by the icons that are directly below them. However, on the back side of every single one of these shipping cards, you're going to notice these commodities. And that's because every time they're introduced, even at the start of the game, you're going to adjust that commodity track up here, depending upon which cards come out, and then flip it over to become a ship. People are going to be trying to ship in order to gain the victory points mm -hmm. that are associated with each of these individual ships. Two other things you're going to note on the board, you have a fish tracker. This is basically going to allow you to convert fish into other types of resources. And down on the bottom left, you're going to notice this area that tells you, again, what you need to build both in the rural area, yeah. which is wood, and stone in the city, or a mixture of either one when you build on the line that's in between them. That's right. The main portion also that I want to talk about right now is you're going to notice a very faint line that goes around the city. This is going to represent the walls that you can build within the game as well. There's one of the spots in the game that allows you to build walls. You're going to be contributing to the group in order to build these yeah. and gain victory points for them through the game. Yeah, and the last thing you're going to get at the start of the game is one of these uh, victory point objectives. Bonus cards, yeah. Yeah, these bonus cards just give you points for all different sorts of things, for having commodities, buildings in certain locations, walls, for having shipped 
if you look at these um, ships down here, each one has a picture of a different good. Yeah. Like this one, for example, gives me two points for every vase by the end of the game. So it's going to kind of direct your play style a little bit. And there are options to get more of these throughout the course of the game. All right. So on your turn, it's very simple. You're going to take one of your houses and you're going to place it on any of the available locations. Now, there are some requirements here, as we said, in order to build in a rural area, meaning the grass area at the top of the board, you have to have wood. Mm -hmm. If you want to build in the city, you have to have stone. So the very first time you place within the game, it's always going to be in the rural area. So mm -hmm. you, you can grab stone. And the moment that you build in here, you collect those immediately. So you can use the stone that you get or the wood that you gather right then in order to build that particular house. And you're going to reflect whatever resources are in those hexes surrounding it. So in this case, I would get two wood and one olive. And I would simply yeah. mark that with the cards on my board. That's a player turn. That's the most basic way to gain resources in the game. But yeah. as you start to do more actions in the game, you're going to start taking some of the city actions, which give you big time bonuses. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely going to start out by placing in the rule because you need to get that stone to even go in the city. And while these, all the rule actions do, like you said, is take up your resource generators, going into the city is how you use those resources. Right. Every space in the city, it almost feels like a worker placement game because you're placing your house down and you're placing it in you know, an intersection where you could be touching possibly three of these action spots, and you're going to take the action of every spot your house touches. Right. One of the unique things, too, about these city locations, when you place in the city location, of course, you have to have one stone in order to place in that area. If you have a second house, you have to have two stones. If you have three houses in the same hex, you have to have three stones That's and right. four. So if you want to take actions over and over again that are printed on the board, you have to have more stone that you've collected from the rural areas. One of the other unique things that happens in the city, several of these locations are going to have a arrow on them. And that's kind of a round little arrow yeah. that's going to denote that once you take the action, every other player at the table that has a house on that same hex is also going to be able to take the action of that hex. Yeah. So you have to be very careful about the actions that you take. Now, there's a whole wide variety of those actions. I'll talk about some of the very basic ones. One of them, or three of them, are actually going to allow you to convert your resources over to the commodities. You have the winery, for example, which is going to allow you to convert X number of, wine, of uh, grapes that you have into commodities, depending upon whatever you have at that given time. Yeah, and what's interesting, like you said, it's going to go around and each person's going to do that for every house they have, yeah. including you. Right. So if you only have three grapes, but you have three houses there, you get to produce nine barrels of wine from those three grapes. There's locations here that allow you to collect more of the bonus cards, which are going to give you in-game victory points. There's a location that's going to allow you to go to the market. That means you're going to be able to sell some of your commodities to the ships on the bottom and to gain victory points from yeah. them and also to directly uh, influence on the market itself by making it go up and down. But the two probably most important things in here are the walls and then the arches themselves. Yeah, the architect and the mason spots let you build these. Um, they're very critical to the game. You're going to score yeah. a lot of points. For example, these walls, every time you place a wall, you get a victory point. Plus, you get more victory points if you build adjacent. So if I'm red and I build a wall right here in the middle, I get extra points for having touched two of my... Um, structures. structures. Yeah. And at the end of the game, you're going to score points for your longest uninterrupted chain of walls, basically. And the cool thing about this, too, is that when you have walls or when you build walls, uh, they can be in any location you want. Yeah. However, you want to try to tie them into the areas that you control or where you place previous buildings. One of the other unique things in the game is that these arches fit over the houses and you don't have to have your own arch over your own house. That's so right. if people have blocked locations, you just come in with an arch and you still have that uninterrupted path because your crawler can flow right through it. Yeah, it gets kind of chaotic in, in a four player game because everyone's trying to block somebody from having a long uninterrupted stretch. But if you go first and you're just building those towers out like crazy, and again, in these spots, you get to take that action multiple times if you have multiple houses. Right. So you could conceivably place three of these arches down at once. Now, other people can come around later and actually slot their buildings in those same slots and they just go under your arch. They still get the action, right. but you've secured that location for your color. So you're going to keep doing this round after round, making sure you have the requirements in order to build in those spots, taking those actions, gaining those resources until each of the players in a four player game, at least, have placed all 10 of their buildings. Now. Most of the victory points you score within the game itself are going to be from shipping down at the market itself. Yeah, or from building walls. Or from building the walls that you built in the game. Mm -hmm. There are, however, a lot of in-game points as well. Number one are the walls that we mentioned. 
your longest interrupted stream of walls is going to give you victory points for however long that is. You're also going to get a lot of victory points for these bonus cards that you've collected. There's yeah. a whole wide variety of these. So you want to make sure you collect a lot of resources, a lot of commodities, and so forth. And then one of the locations is going to give you victory points for sets. So yeah, if I have um, five houses and five sets of commodities, I could score five sets and you'll get the printed value of whatever, wherever those uh, commodities in the game, you'll get that many points. So you can score a ton of points. Granted, those spots are going to go fast, so you're probably only going to get one or two houses maybe on that spot. Yeah, this game is all about making the right decisions at the right time because these spots are going to fill up fast and they are first come, first serve. So any of these hexes is going to have a multitude of different areas around it. But once they're taken, they're taken, especially the ones on the outskirts of the city and the rural areas because there's really only one spot in those locations. So you really have to plan ahead. Yeah. You have to know what kind of resources you want to gather and then you want to know which of these city actions you want to enact in order to gain victory points yeah and though we haven't actually um, played it this way yet there is also like a solo mode there is yeah. where you're com just competing to try to get the highest score there's a set of AI cards that'll kind of control an AI but really you're just competing with yourself in that point and there's a really unique two-player mode too where it had some really cool blocking aspects yeah. in the game mm -hmm. as well so guys that is Ragusa it is one to five players if you guys have any questions about the game make them in the comments below of course check out the Kickstarter these were all prototype components that you saw here we'll have all the final version there mm -hmm. and we will catch you guys next time bye